I grew up caring about and still care a great deal about lyric poetry. And um, one of the first literary critics I read when I was um, perhaps a freshman or a sophomore in college was M.H. Um, Abrams in a great book called The, the Mirror and the Lamp. And um, many years after that, when I was serving as a trustee on the board of the center, Mike Abrams came in his 95th year and gave a stupendous lecture about reading poems aloud, talking about what happens when we voice something, when we embody it, how it's different from seeing it on the page, and took very different poets um, John Keats, who of course died in his mid-20s, um, and um, Emily Dickinson, if I remember right, and then Archie Ammons in a poem about death, which had a special poignancy given that Professor Abrams was presumably close to the end. Now he managed to live another seven years, but the force of character and knowledge that this man in his 95th year brought to a detailed discursive lecture about lyric poetry at the center was a moment I'd never forget. But more recently, and I started our conversation talking about this election, more recently I was struck by seeing Lin-Manuel Miranda talk about Hamilton. And Hamilton, of course, is a great humanist himself, a member of the American Philosophical Society who was steeped in a kind of knowledge that we could only pray our politicians today would have. Um, but Manuel, Lynn manuel was talking about creating Hamilton, the Broadway sensation. And he said that for him, that play was more autobiographical than In the Heights, which is of course his Tony winning play about growing up in Washington Heights. And he said it was more autobiographical because it reflected how he felt about the nation and about life. And I thought about that, and I remembered another interview where he was talking about reading Ron Chernow's biography of Hamilton, and I thought, how extraordinary is that? Because you have to unpack that. You have to step back and say, wait a minute, Hamilton, the book, is a 750-page doorstop with thousands of endnotes, but somehow it speaks so much to this man who has a completely different ethnicity, heritage, lives in a different generation, quite different profession. And then I thought about Mike Abrams because Lin-Manuel went on to talk about rap as a means of expression, as a means of creativity to engender knowledge in a new generation and spark engagement and therefore create change. And he talked about how he used different forms of lyric sort of mimicking rap history, if you will, to express these things so differently. And I realized that I had in my head at one and the same time, Professor Abrams of Cornell in his 95th year and Lin-Manuel Miranda in his perhaps 35th year telling me analogous things, both important, about very different poets and about the way in which we embody that and bring that out and create change as a result of it. So I, I just thought that comparison was powerful and interesting and perhaps topical now on the eve of our election and with the craze around Hamilton.